What is going on, YouTube? Averse John Stanick from Johnny Radio here, bringing you another all time top five, my favorite double albums of all time. This is going to be a fun one, so let's not waste any time. Let's get right to it. At number five, Tommy by The Who from 1969. Just a, a masterpiece and also a fantastic concept album that tells the story of Tommy, the deaf, dumb, blind kid that sure plays a mean pinball. And of course, you have hits like Pinball Wizard and See Me, Feel Me, but then you also have these gems, uh, a lot of great instrumentals on here like Sparks, which was uh, such a huge part of the film Almost Famous. And then of course you have uh, just the way this starts out with an overture and then halfway through an underture, just like a real rock opera and the first of its kind, just a monumental record. And that's just my number five. So now at number four, the White Album by the Beatles from 1968. Have to have this on your list, man. I mean, just uh, talk about like throwing everything but the kitchen sink at a record. These guys proved that they were the best of the best, like just doing every genre of music known to man. Songs like Rocky Raccoon, which is like kind of a country tune. You've got Helter Skelter, kind of the first heavy metal song of all time, if you look at it that way. Uh, I mean, and then you've just got, of course, While My Guitar Gently Weeps and Blackbird and so many amazing songs mixed in with all these great gems like Why Don't We Do It in the Road and like it's just such a fun album, even if some of it is, you know, Revolution 9 almost seems nonsensical, but somehow it works because it's just so all over the place. It is brilliant. And that's just my number four. So now at number three. Physical Graffiti by Led Zeppelin from 1975. Man, this was them at the peak of their power. Songs like Cashmere Alone, just amazing. And then you have songs like Trampled Underfoot where they're in introducing different instrumentation like a clavinet giving it this funky vibe. John Paul Jones being a key element to a lot of the great stuff that they were able to do like the Beatles kind of genre hopping songs like Down by the Seaside uh, then you've got songs like Ten Years Gone and In the Light like just so many huge songs mixed in with all these uh, smaller tracks that work so brilliantly not a wasted space on this thing and that's just my number three so now at number two All Things Must Pass by George Harrison. And yes, I have a solo Beatle above the Beatles. And that's because, man, I mean, this album just, I think it's definitely the best solo Beatles album out there, uh, released in 1970. This was George, you know, coming off of Abbey Road, and he had all these songs that he had backlogged because, uh, you know, John and, and Paul were not letting him get all his tracks on, on albums, like the title, title track, for example. You can see in the Let It Be documentary, they were working on that one, but it didn't quite work out. But man, does it work here. And also songs like My Sweet Lord and Wah Wah and just, I mean, Hear Me Lord. Every single thing works on here. And I love it's technically a triple album with the last one being these extended jam sessions with the likes of Eric Clapton. And uh, I just love to the wall of sound, uh, you know, production by Phil Spector on this thing. I think it works perfectly. And yeah, it's just fantastic. And that's just my number two. So now at number one, Songs in the Key of Life by Stevie Wonder. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, it's just wonderful, uh, for lack of a better word. I mean, you've got songs like As and Another Star. You've got I Wish and Sir Duke and Isn't She Lovely. I mean, every single one of these is a song that everyone knows and loves. Then you've got gems like Pastime Paradise uh, that, of course, was used later in a rap song, Gangster's Paradise. But the original is so much better and more thoughtful. I mean, lyrically, uh, musically, Stevie was just on another level with this thing. And this came after albums like Inner Versions, which was already amazing. But this is like just incredible, just from the opening of Love's in Need of Love Today, which it's, it's like such a 
uh, simple yet powerful sentiment that uh, you just feel the love throughout this whole record. Uh, you really feel like he put his heart and soul into this thing and so many songs like Village Ghetto Land. Um, there's a lot of, you know, songs about social injustice, but then also so many great uh, love ballads and uh, just throughout the whole thing, you're like, man, how did one guy uh, you know, produce this whole thing, play drums, keyboards, he sings the hell out of it. I mean, this is just an absolute 10 out of 10 masterpiece. And that is my list, guys. So let me know in the comments below what you think. What would your top five be? And if you're so bold, leave me a top 10. I will be posting my top 10 in shorts form later this week. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, guys, we got so much more on the channel of course top fives all the time uh we got the top three show going strong we got album reviews so much more thank you for watching and as always mm -hmm.